In this video, I break down the biggest mistakes people make when buying stainless steel cookware. Since these pans are expensive and they can last forever, it's important to know which features actually matter. Let's get right into it. The first mistake is buying the wrong type of stainless steel cookware. Most people don't realize that stainless steel pans are not made entirely of stainless steel. They mainly consist of aluminum or copper encased by thin layers of stainless steel. The steel serves as a protective shell around the aluminum or copper. Stainless steel is durable and won't rust or react with acidic foods, but it's a terrible heat conductor. On the other hand, aluminum and copper are not as durable, but they're great heat conductors. By bonding steel with aluminum or copper, you get the best of both worlds. A pan that heats evenly, lasts long, and can be used to cook any ingredient. Here's where the mistake happens. People who don't understand how stainless steel cookware is made fall into the trap of buying disc bottom pans instead of fully clad pans. Fully clad pans have the conductive core layer of aluminum or copper throughout the pan, including the sides. Disc bottom cookware only has this conductive layer at the base. There are two advantages of fully clad cookware. Number one, it distributes heat across the entire cooking surface more evenly. So if you're sauteing vegetables and tossing them around in the pan, the bottom and the sides will be the same temperature and the food will cook evenly. And two, it's more durable since it's the same thickness throughout. With fully clad pans, you don't have to worry about the disc separating from the bottom of the pan, which I've seen happen many times with disc bottom pans. Fully clad cookware costs more upfront, but it performs better and lasts longer. On a similar note, you might see the terms 3-ply and 5-ply when shopping for stainless steel cookware. The term ply refers to the number of bonded layers that make up each pan. A huge mistake that people make is assuming that more plies are better. The reality is most stainless steel cookware is 3-ply with two layers of steel and a core layer of aluminum. But to get a leg up on the competition, some brands call their 3-ply cookware 5-ply. They get away with this because technically the core layer of aluminum is three sheets of metal, a middle sheet of aluminum alloy bonded to the steel by two layers of pure aluminum. For example, this all-clad D3 pan and this made-in pan have the same composition, but all-clad calls it 3-ply and made-in calls theirs 5-ply. I made another video just on this topic, which I'll link to in the description, but the key point is that the number of plies doesn't really matter. What matters is the material of those plies and their thickness. In the case of all clad D3 and made in, the materials and thickness are the same. So despite the difference in name, there's no significant difference in function. Another mistake, which I just alluded to, is not paying attention to the thickness of the cookware. It's easy to make this mistake because most cookware brands don't list thickness online. In most cases, you have to call the manufacturer or go into the store and compare pans. As a general rule, the thicker the cookware, the better. Thick cookware heats slower, but more evenly, and it retains heat better it's also less likely to warp. Controlling the heat is much more difficult with thinner pans. They heat up extremely fast and it's easy to burn food and smoke up your kitchen if you're not paying attention. Also, most electric stoves cycle the heat on and off to maintain a desired temperature. With thin pans that lose heat fast, the continuous cycling of heat can throw off your cooking. Thicker pans will maintain a more consistent temperature as the heat cycles on and off. Look for pans that are around 3 mm thick. Those will provide a good balance of thickness and weight. If you don't mind a heavy pan, the DeMeyer Proline is one of the thickest I've used at 5.5 mm. Speaking of weight, another mistake is buying pans that are too heavy. Thick, even heating pans are great, but if they're too heavy for you to use comfortably, that's a problem. As you shop, think not only about the weight of the pan, but also the added weight of food. This is especially important for pieces that you'll use for stove to oven meals. Most 12 inch stainless steel fry pans are around three pounds, but some can be over five pounds. If you buy a heavy fry pan, make sure it has a second helper handle so that you can easily move it with two hands. Rounded handles seem like a great idea. When you pick up a pan with a rounded handle in the store, it feels comfortable and smooth, exactly what you want. But the problem is that rounded handles can actually be dangerous. When you're cooking and your hands are wet, greasy, or you're holding a towel or wearing an oven mitt, your hand can easily slip. Let's say you're pouring a saucepan full of hot pasta into a strainer. When you tilt the pot, you want your hand to remain secure so the handle doesn't rotate and lead to a dangerous spill. So instead of buying pans with rounded handles, Look for pans with handles that are flatter or have a groove on top to secure your hand. Some good examples are Made In and Viking. All Clad takes this to the extreme and has these cup-shaped handles that almost guarantee your hand won't slip, but the downside is that they're not as comfortable. There are two ways to attach handles to pans. Using rivets is the most common, 
but some handles are welded. Riveted handles are durable and will never detach, but the area around the rivets can collect food and grease and is difficult to keep clean. Pans with welded handles have a smooth, uninterrupted cooking surface that's easier to clean, but the handles are not as secure. I learned that the hard way when the welded handle of my Demeyer Proline fry pan broke off after a few months of use. I'm not saying this happens frequently or you should avoid all pans with welded handles, but it's a risk most people don't consider. Another mistake is not considering the finish. Polished stainless steel has a shiny, mirror-like finish. It has an aesthetically pleasing and traditional look, but smudges, fingerprints, and scratches are more noticeable. On the other hand, brushed stainless steel has a duller, matte finish that requires less maintenance to keep it looking new. Stainless steel pans are often used for serving, so think about the look you want in your kitchen and dining rooms, but also think about cleaning and maintenance. Rims play an important role in the function of your cookware, and for most people, it's an afterthought. Pans with flared rims make drip-free pouring and sliding food from the pan to the plate easier, but pans with straight rims do a better job containing ingredients because the walls are slightly higher. If all else is equal, go with flared rims and avoid messes from liquids dripping down the sides. Stainless steel pans either have steel or tempered glass lids. Glass seems like a good idea since you can monitor your cooking without lifting the lid and letting heat and moisture escape, but in most cases, the steam fogs up the glass, so you need to lift the lid anyway. If you have the choice, go with stainless steel lids. There's no risk of them breaking, and they're easier to clean. With glass lids, food and grease can get stuck between the glass and the metal rim. Another common mistake is assuming all stainless steel cookware will work on your induction cooktop. But that's not true. For cookware to be induction compatible, the bottom needs to be magnetic. Before you buy stainless steel pans, make sure the bottom layer is made of 18-0 steel or another type of magnetic steel. A quick way to know if a pan will work on induction is to see if a magnet sticks to it. If it does, you're good to go. Purchasing a complete cookware set might seem like a good deal, but it's often a mistake. The overall cost per item is less, but sets often include unnecessary sizes, extra lids, and pans you'll never use. A smarter approach is to buy individual pieces. This way you can pick the exact shapes and sizes you need and expand your collection over time. Another advantage to buying individual pieces is mixing brands. For example, you might invest more in a high quality frying pan that you'll use daily and save on a large stock pot, that you'll only use occasionally from a cheaper brand. That said, sets that include just the essentials like a skillet, saucepan, and stock pot can be a good deal, especially if you're starting from scratch. Another mistake people make is buying cookware they don't love to save money. I'm not suggesting you buy anything you can't comfortably afford, but stainless steel cookware can last a lifetime. And if you like to cook, it's a product you'll likely use every day. So while I don't recommend buying expensive non-stick cookware that you'll need to replace, it makes sense to splurge a little on stainless steel and get something with the design, finish, and handles you'll love. You don't wanna be stuck with pans you don't enjoy, and upgrading later will cost you even more. It's another reason I recommend buying individual pieces. You don't need to spend a huge sum of money all at once. On the flip side of that is overpaying. You don't need to spend $200 on one Allclad or Demeyer pan to get great performance and durability. Plenty of brands use very similar materials and construction processes, but cost significantly less because they sell primarily online and avoid retail markups. If you're ready to buy quality stainless steel cookware, I'll link to my favorite brands in the description of this video. Those are affiliate links, so I'll earn a commission if you click and buy, but at no extra cost to you. If you really want Allclad or another expensive brand, but you don't want to pay full price, sign up for my free newsletter in the pinned comment, and I'll email you when those brands go on sale. If you found this video helpful, check out this video where I highlight the best cookware brands made in the USA. And don't forget to click the logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.